Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, the 28th day of June 2022. I hope you're all healthy and safe today, and I hope that you and your family are healthy and safe, and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and those who are the first responders putting their lives on the line every day to save lives, and those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets, sidewalks, parks, highways clean, and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to rescue and deliver the children, the young people, the teenagers who are victims of child molestation and pedophilia, the victims of pornography and child pornography, the victims of pornography, child pornography, as well as prostitution and child prostitution, the victims of human trafficking and sex slavery and double curses on the perpetrators, the perverts and the profiteers who traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless, Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children on the streets of the United States of America. And we're now going into a recession, so it's going to get worse. And millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, brothers and sisters, in a few days, you know, you're going to start on July 1st, midnight. We're going to, it's going to be free agency. Now, we're going to talk more about that probably tomorrow or Thursday. We're going to talk more about that. But I have some unfinished business to discuss regarding the draft. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about, you know, what the Knicks could have, would have, should have, BS. No, I want to talk about Gene Montero and Trevor Keels. I want to talk about these two young people. And what does it mean that the Knicks picked, like the 42nd pick, Trevor Keels, and then signed to an Exhibit 10A contract, which is basically a summer league and training camp contract for Gene Montero? Um Let's talk first of all what these two young men have in common. They're both 18 and they're going to be 19 some point before the season starts. So they're teenagers. Okay. Young people. Um, also both of them are terrible defenders. Kills can't stay in front of anybody on the perimeter and Montero just seems unwilling. Okay. But. Now, differences. Keels is almost 6'5", 224 pounds. Definitely an NBA frame. Definitely an NBA frame. Strong kid. A little undersized if you want to play him at the two. Definitely undersized if you want to play him at the three. But I think he's more of a two. He has to improve his shot. Okay? He has to improve his lateral movement. But he's 18. So that's why the Knicks are... What do they signal? They're signaling here development. Okay. They're also from the draft signaling that they're going to, as Leon Rose clearly stated, which some of y'all are not receiving, but he clearly stated they're going to continue development program. Some of y'all use that to crap all over Tom Thibodeau. Y'all need to get over stuff. I'm not saying Thibodeau like a best coach or that the greatest coach or whatever, but y'all need to stop tripping. It ain't all of that. Okay. He still knows defense. All right. He knows defense. And as far as development, hey, Obi and IQ showed their worth at the end of last season. Don't think that that's going to go unnoticed, okay? So let's stop tripping. On the positive note, Kills and Montero need a lot of work. Now, Montero offensively, strong. I believe, I mean, some people actually predicted both of these kids to be first-round picks. I did, okay? Some people did. I, I don't know what they figured. You know, this is the thing, brethren. There's NBA speed. We keep talking about that. NBA speed. It's not G League speed. It's not European League speed. NBA speed is the top of the pile. Okay? That's that's as fast as you're going to go. All right? NBA speed. It's not 33 RPM. It's not 43, 45 RPM. It's 72 RPM. Okay? So some kids could look good at 33 RPM or 45 RPM. That don't mean they're going to be able to handle it at 72 RPM. All right. At 18, very rare that that's going to happen. So these two kids are going to be used as development. The Knicks are focused on development, not just development of these two kids, but it also shows because they didn't make any picks in this draft. They're going to focus on the development of the kids we already have. OK, this is obvious a future play. Let's take Montero, for example. Montero is not very athletic. 6'2", 175, slim cap. 
Okay. Um, not very athletic, not very fast, but he could get to the rack. He can get to the rack. He gets to the rack and he can finish pretty good. Okay. But that's more of a IQ type of player. Like Emmanuel quickly, you know, somebody that you're going to have coming off your bench. I believe Montero is a type of guy that the Knicks would like to develop in case when it comes time for IQ's extension, he decides to leave. That's thinking ahead. Okay, because Montero, if he's going to make the league, he's going to need two or three seasons to develop. Okay, when he's maybe 2021, 20, he might be ready for an NBA court. Mike, that's, I'm assuming he's going to grow in speed. He's going to grow in maturity. He's going to grow in a want to on the defensive end. He's got a natural scoring ability, but he's not ready for the league right now. So that's why he got Exhibit 10A contract. If he shows during this summer a willingness to play defense on a serious level. He, he He's a matador defense. If you ain't seen, he's matador, okay? He, he needs to show that he's willing to play on a defensive end. If he does that, he might be able to stick around for a G League contract. As far as kills, kills a second round pick. He don't need a G League contract, but he's going to spend most of his time in the G League. He's not going to be playing in the NBA court this year. He's not ready, okay? He's physical. Don't have the lateral foot speed to stay in front of anybody on the perimeter, might be able to stay in front of people at the two or the three, like a, like a door, you know, might be somebody like that. Um, but right now he's not ready. He's not ready for the league right now. So that's development. That's why we pick it. That's why they pick these two kids. Not only did they pick them for the future, but they got him cheap. See, that's a Leon move right there. That's a Brock Allen move right there. So they got the future to develop possibly and they got it cheap. So it's hardly going to cost them anything to see what these kids could do. Okay. So that's what I like about that. I also, again, like the, to me, the stamp that they put on saying, we're going to continue to develop your Ovi Toppins, your Emmanuel Quickly, your Deuce McBride, your Cam Reddishes, your Mitchell Robinsons, your RJ Barrett. We're going to continue to develop the young core going forward. See, you can't be just switching up every draft. Some of y'all would, you know, if you listen to yourself, that's what you're really saying. Oh, we, we committed to RJ Barrett at, at number three overall, but let's get rid of him and go get somebody else in this draft. That's, that's short term thinking. It, it, it's, it's narrow. It's stupid. You got to look longer term. Okay. Longer term. So the Gene Marteros and the Trevor Keels of the world, that's for three years down the road. That's if Emmanuel quickly decides. I think I can get paid somewhere else better than in New York in two years. Then you got your Gene Montero that you've been developing to become that bench scorer. Okay. Trevor Keels, if he can become a, a door, if he can improve his lateral foot speed, if he could improve his, his, uh, spot up jump shooting, um, then maybe later on he could become a Lewis door for us, a defense, cause physically nobody gonna push him around. I mean, he's strong physically. Um, you know, and he has a good basketball IQ, as you would expect from a Duke player. He has a really good basketball IQ. But as far as being ready for the league, to see some of y'all get caught up in college. Not everybody that can rock in college can rock in the league. It's the league. You understand? This ain't 45 RPM. This is 72. You got to be ready to do that. Okay? That's why most rookies struggle. Very few times you get a rookie like Alonzo Ball that can come in and ball at 72 RPM. From the jump. Some people, you know, could do that, but that's a rare situation, man. That's a rare situation. So don't expect that from every one of these guys. You're going to see a lot of them struggle this year because you got to get used to that speed. There's a lot in the NBA, okay? Plus the physicality. NBA's the most physical lead on the planet. See? So you got to be ready for that. So I'm, I'm feeling like Trevor Keels got the physical. He going to be all right with the physical part. It's the speed part. It's the defensive part. You know, he's going to struggle with Montero. We're going to see. That's why he's on the exhibit 10. I don't know if he's ready for the speed. Is he going to commit to defense? What's his attitude like? We're going to find out. You know, both of these kids should be in. The, in fact, they should be in the summer league. They will be in the summer league, both of these kids. And so we'll get the opportunity to see them. Don't expect them to, you know, to, you know, play the major roles in the summer league. That's, that's for Deuce, Jericho, Sims, and Grimes. They're going to play the major roles in the summer league this year. Okay. And it's interesting. I know IQ would want to play summer league because he can feel Deuce breathing down his neck. 
but it's all good. He done play some league this year. It's deuce time. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see what happens. But as far as, again, as far as Keels and Montero, that's a, that's, those are guys for the future to see what they got at a low cost and what we can do with them in terms of development for the next two or three seasons at a low cost. That's what you're getting right here. Okay. Is, you know, it is what it is. So I just wanted y'all to, you know, to, you know, play on that. Some of y'all acting like these kids going to be stars. Hey, listen, I hope they are one day, but they're not right now. They're not ready. Okay. They're not ready right now for the league. Neither of them. But they could develop into something, you know, maybe they could be stars later on. I hope so. I'd love the Knicks to get two stars, one in the second round, one in Exhibit 10 A contract and let the Exhibit 10 A do prove itself and get a U, a G League contract. That will be cool. You know, I have no problem with that. And also, I'm hoping that they convert Jericho Sims contract to from a G League contract to a regular roster contract. He should be the undisputed backup center behind Mitch Rob. OK, he should be. He's earned that. I feel like he's earned that. So this is the development moves that the Knicks are making. Um and that, that's how we are doing it. I know some of y'all are going to use this as an opportunity to, to, to trip on Tibbs. He's not a development coach, blah, blah, blah. Stop tripping. Stop it. Okay? He is what we got. If he don't work out, if he's not with the program, I already told y'all. By the All-Star break, he'll be gone. But I don't think, you know, I know he's stubborn, but I don't think he's that stupid. He's stubborn now. And he knows the direction. Leon, listen, y'all need to understand something. The buck stops with Leon, not Tibbs. Leon is the president of basketball operations. He has laid out the vision already. Young core, he said that at the end of the season, and just a, less than a week ago, development. Development program. Tom heard that. If he doesn't follow through, don't worry. There'll be another coach in here mid-season. Okay? There'll be another coach in here. I think that's what the Jalen Brunson thing, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but I think that's what that's all about. I think that's a compromise between Tom and Leon. Jalen's the compromise. What do I mean by that? I think Jalen Brunson is Tom's guy. And I think Leon said, okay, we bring Jalen in. But you got to play these kids. I think that's the compromise. Okay, don't, you know, tell him, don't expect all these veterans to come here and get 30 and 40 minutes a night. You want your point guard? Here he is. 100 million worth. Play these kids. That's what I'm saying. So we're going to see what happens. Um, you know, that's it. Some, like I said, some of y'all, I mean, some of y'all is ridiculous. In this, uh, it's Tibbs hate, man. Y'all need to really, I don't know what's wrong with your life or whatever, but the dude ain't rape your sister as far as I know. Chill for a minute. You know, he got his positives. The boy, the boy got a winning record. Last year was only his second losing record in, as a head coach in 10 seasons. So y'all need to chill, chill for a minute. All right. We in development mode. This is rebuilding mode. Like I said, let me just reiterate. If he's not with the program, he'll be removed. I, I'm pretty, Leon's not going to go down with Tom Thibodeau. He's not going to say, I'll be fired with you, Tom. That's not going to happen. Okay? If necessary, he will remove him. Okay? But I happen to believe that Tibbs learned from last season. I happen to believe that because Obi's in his third season now, RJ's going into his fourth season now, you have IQ in his third season and Deuce in his second that Tom has now learned to trust these guys. Even Berman said that. Berman, even Berman said that Tom now trusts Obi. That's a big thing with Tibbs. It's just hard to win that trust. But once you do, you win. Okay? So I think that these kids, over the course of their rookie seasons and their second year seasons, have won his trust. That being the case, let's see what happens after the summer league. Let's see what happens in camp. Jalen Brunson could very well be a Nick by Monday. And that's how, long, how soon we will know. For July 1st is Friday. Monday we'll know. If not before. Okay. We're going to know what direction he decides to go. Okay. So we'll talk more again. We'll talk more about that tomorrow or Thursday, as it were. All right. But in the meantime... Please be safe out there. Enjoy your Tuesday. Sure.